Welcome to Life-Giving Water Messages, where I expound upon the Word of God and, through the internet, deliver it to you. My name is Rev. Todd Laddick, and today I bring to you part two of a four-part series entitled, To Be or Not to Be the Church, with today's message specifically entitled, Be a Disciple, hashtag, not just a churchgoer, based off of Luke chapter 9, verses 23 through 25. So let us dive into the word today. Then he said to the crowd, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross daily, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but are yourself lost or destroyed? Amen. So, you were meant to, quote, get lost so that the true you can be found. When we lose ourselves in following Jesus, our true identity is revealed as a beloved child of God, created to love and serve alongside God's beloved children. Wait, get lost? That's the message? Get lost? Didn't Jesus say, don't get lost? And uh, how about let's not and say we did? Getting lost can be a frightening and painful experience and can ruin our plans. And certainly getting lost in a salvation kind of way, why would we want to do that? Like getting lost, it just, we always seem, why would we ever want to get lost? That doesn't seem like a good thing. So let me ask you this. Have you ever gotten lost? Let me tell you about a time I got lost. I have many (laughs) lost stories, but there was this time when I was a teenager that I had a couple hours before work, so I figured I'd go on a joyride with my friend. And so we drove down to Stoke State Forest uh, and then decided to explore one of the roads off of Route 206, just past the entrance of, uh, again, Stoke State Forest. And being this was a, a time that predated GPS, and I had never ventured off onto any of those back roads before, I got myself and my friend good and lost. Now, uh, my father always told me that it is hard to truly get lost in New Jersey because every road, besides dead ends, uh, lead eventually to somewhere familiar. Well... This may be true over time. I mean, I I beg you to try it if you want one day, get lost uh, intentionally and see where you end up, but you'll end up somewhere. This is true because New Jersey is not that big of a state. Um, But when you have a job to be at and you get lost in New Jersey, you're still lost. Still, my my dad was was right, and eventually I ended up at the Delaware Water Gap National Recreation Area off of Route 80, which honestly, now that I know the area very well, uh, I could retrace those steps and, and, and that drive and, and have no problems. I know exactly where I'm going now. And, uh, you know, we, we had weaved around some, you know an, another state park and I don't know, somehow eventually found our way the long way <laughs> to... to to the National Water Gap, uh, Delaware Na- uh, Water Gap National Recreation Area off of Route 80, and eventually got home. Once I saw Route 80, it was like, oh, I know, okay, I know where I am. And then I, I, you know, I called my job once I got home to let them know uh, what happened and that I would be, I would be coming in. Needless to say, I was super late. And when I came in, the manager sat me down, gave me the riot act, and fired me. Now. Granted, I had never been late before to this job. I had never called out, was always reliable, did a good job, all of that. But because of this one mistake, I was fired. A few months later, that same manager, who knew my mom, asked, you know, uh, asked her if I, I wanted me, you know, asked her to ask me if I wanted my job back. <laughs> Let's just say, as a person of principle, I gladly declined. Still, while getting lost can be scary, it can at other times be amazingly freeing. 
by giving us the opportunity to see and notice what is really important in our lives. Getting, quote, lost, unquote, can sometimes lead to a greater blessing than remaining on the known path. Think of a time when you have gotten lost in something. Perhaps a song, a sport, an experience of nature, or in the act of creating something. Now let me ask you this. Have you ever had that experience in or with a church community? For example, getting lost in the spirit of worship, in connection with God or others, in mission or in service. What feelings did that experience evoke? What was the effect personally or corporately as a congregation? Friends, while getting lost in the eternal sense, which is what Jesus is talking about in our scripture, while that's not a good thing at all, and certainly getting lost in a physical sense, such, such as losing direction, can be quite scary and dangerous, but getting lost in the moment, as in letting go of all things that keep us from worshiping and serving God, can and does connect us to something greater than ourselves. Now, you may be wondering, like, how does this then tie into the scripture? How does, you know, okay, you read a scripture where Jesus says, don't get lost, but now you're preaching on getting lost in a different way than Jesus is talking. So, Let's look at the scripture in Luke chapter 9, verses 23 through 25. And this is what I love about Jesus. And this is what Kierkegaard loved about Jesus. Jesus here gives us a paradox. And it's not the only time he does, but he gives us a paradox here. We will find true life only when we let go and lose our life in order to save it. Ah, now we see where we're talking about getting lost or losing, right? Okay, so there are four movements in this passage. One, deny yourself. Two, take up your cross. Three, follow Jesus. And four, uh, find true life. So... Let us look at the first movement, deny yourself. Jesus' call to deny ourselves strikes at the struggle between pursuing our own human desires and those of God. Self-denial is about moving away from self-censoredness, selfishness, and the need to maintain control. As much as it is to die to sinful nature. Self-denial can manifest as a choice to think, to act, and react in the ways Christ calls us. For example, there have been many times in church and in life that people have said some pretty careless, thoughtless, and hurtful things to me. The same is true in terms of some people's actions toward me. I'm a human being, like all of us here, and in those moments I often feel the need to rebut, to give them a piece of my mind, or even to be hurtful back, as we all can feel that way sometimes. But because of Jesus, because of his prayer, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I often find myself praying the same thing in those moments. The hurt does not go away immediately, nor did it for Jesus. But the anger, the need to respond or to lash out, goes away. In other words, we can make these types of choices to deny ourselves and follow Jesus. We can. If I can do it, we all can do it. Amen? Next, let's look at the second movement. Take up your cross. The cross was a symbol of guilt and death. Yet Jesus chose death on the cross rather than retaliation. 
He went against the prevailing values and realities of the day to embrace what would have been perceived as failure and defeat. Jesus calls his disciples to defy culturally defined values and aspirations, to defy them. By choosing the pattern of living God has set before them, embodied and proclaimed in Jesus. Consider what crosses we as a congregation are being called to bear today. What are the needs in our congregation that need to be met? What are the needs in our communities that need to be met? And let us also consider the fact that our church has been alive, well, and active in our community throughout the entire pandemic. Sure, much of what we did remotely, much much of that we did remotely, but we can celebrate today the fact that though we too were suffering in many ways, we as a community picked up our cross to alleviate the suffering of others, such as the suffering of isolation, the suffering of health care workers, the suffering of hunger, the suffering of poverty, etc. The third movement is follow Jesus. A disciple's goal is to learn from and emulate their teacher. Disciple simply means student. Following Jesus is to be remade into his image so that we can live as our true selves, freed from self-centered pursuits. Jesus becomes the guide when the disciples let go of their own agenda. Finally, the last movement is to find true life. The paradox in losing and finding our lives confronts us with the question, how do we define life? For Jesus, true life is the life God made and saved us for. Life as a child of God that thrives in perfect communion with God, one another, and all creation. It may sound like an impossible ideal, but that is the path Jesus invites his followers to take up. His way, his values, and the greater mission to serve others. How do we lose our life for Christ? For the disciples, it meant that they were no longer their own. But they now belonged to a new family with a new purpose that not only changed their lives for the better, but helped countless others find true life through Jesus Christ. Their identity as Jesus followers affected every area of their lives. It made their lives what they were. That transformation would have been impossible had they tried to save parts of their old lives. The same is true for our, for disciples today, I mean. The same is true for us who are disciples today. What might it look like for you to not resist loss, but to purposely lose yourselves, your own pursuits, desires for control, achievement, etc. In a journey of discipleship, what might it like look like for you to not resist loss, but to purposely lose yourselves in a journey of discipleship? When you lose yourselves in discipleship, I want to remind you of what will be found. Your true selves, your true purpose and true joy in serving and walking with others. And what God is already doing in and around you, and in Jesus as guide and companion. Friends, the more you pray, read scripture, worship, give, serve others in church and community, and witness your faith to others through your presence 
through clothing the naked, through sheltering the homeless, through visiting the sick and in prison, through working for justice and peace, through feeding the hungry, through caring for the afflicted, and when necessary, through your words. What ways can we as a church help one another to get lost, deny ourselves, and live more into actually following Christ? What are we afraid to lose? What are we called to lose? What we seek to find, love, joy, peace, freedom, can only be found in letting go and denying the usual patterns of responding, judging, and controlling. Let us be a community, not of churchgoers, but of Christ followers. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, this is a, a hopeful and yet challenging message because it, the hope is that, Lord, you've included us in your great family and you've asked us to join the ranks of your disciples to, to be those who transformed this world from what it is into what you created it to be. And so, Lord, what a blessing and an honor for us. But what a challenge, too, because it does mean then, Lord, that we need to respond to your call and that our response is just that, our response. And so, Lord, help us to be a people who respond not only wisely but joyously uh, so that we may not only be followers of you, but also be people who are walking in your footsteps. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, it is a joy and a blessing always to have you tune in and listen to this. Um, I certainly enjoy bringing these messages to you, and uh, no doubt... Uh, you know, it, I, I've learned just as much from them as I hope that you're getting out of them as well. Uh, so yeah, so, uh, thank you for tuning in. As always, I want to remind you, you know, to check out those, uh, episode notes. Um, you know, uh, you'll see there, there are links, uh, uh to give, uh, either to Tithely or to PayPal. If this is your main spiritual sustenance for the week, uh, we would love for you to, to contribute, uh, all that you give, uh, helps to us to continue on the mission and the ministry of Jesus Christ. Um, if you go to another church and this is just supplemental, by all means, support your, your faith community. That is of utmost importance and if you have it in you to support us both well by god that would be a blessing to both of us and neither of us would be uh would be the worse for wear for it so uh thank you so much again for tuning in and i do want to remind remind you of one simple thing friends you have been richly blessed and that is so you may be a blessing to others Go in peace.